Eighth grade, unit one, lesson 14, alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are created when two parallel lines are crossed by another line called a transversal. Alternate interior angles are inside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. This diagram shows two pairs of alternate interior angles. Angles A and D are one pair, and angles B and C are another pair. Transversal. A transversal is a line that cuts across parallel lines. In this example, the transversal line is marked in red. Number one. Use the diagram to find the measures of each angle. Explain your reasoning. A. The measure of angle ABC. I highlighted the angle ABC in yellow. And they tell us that angle CBD is 50 degrees. Angle ABC plus 50 degrees will equal 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 50 degrees will equal the measure for angle ABC. Since 180 minus 50 is 130, angle ABC is 130 degrees. And we can double check that by adding it. 50 degrees plus 130 degrees equals 180 degrees. B. The measure of angle EBD. Well, they started out by giving us the measure for angle CBD, and that was 50 degrees. And the alternate interior angle for CBD is angle ABE, which will also be 50 degrees. And then we figured out the measure for angle ABC, which was 130 degrees. And it has an alternate interior angle as well. And that's angle EBD. So angle EBD's measure will also be 130 degrees. C. The measure of angle ABE. Well, we already found that. The measure for angle ABE will be the alternate interior angle of angle CBD. And that alternate interior angle is ABE. So that will also be 50 degrees. Number two, lines K and L are parallel and the measure of angles ABC is 19 degrees. A. Explain why the measure of angle ECF is 19 degrees. If you get stuck, consider translating line L by moving B to C. I highlighted line K in green and line L in red, and you can see that they're parallel. Now I'm highlighting angle ABC in red. They told us that angle ABC is 19 degrees, so that we know that this red angle, ABC, is 19 degrees. Angle ABC and angle ECF are the same measure. If you were to trace them and lay one on top of the other, you would see that they are the same measure. They're both 19 degrees. B. What is the measure of angle BCD? Explain. Angle BCD is an alternate interior angle of angle ECF. And since angle ECF is 19 degrees, then angle BCD will also be 19 degrees. I went ahead and labeled all the angles with the measure of 19 degrees. Number three, the diagram shows three lines with some marked angle measures. Find the missing angle measures marked with question marks. Well, 70 plus the angle labeled with the question mark to its left would total 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 70 is 110. So 110 degrees plus 70 degrees would equal 180 degrees. This question mark represents 110 degrees. 
Now all we have to do is identify the alternate interior angles. First, let's find the alternate interior angle for 110 degrees. There's the alternate interior angle for 110 degrees. Now let's find the alternate interior angle for the angle with the measure of 70 degrees. This question mark represents the alternate interior angle for the angle that is 70 degrees, so it will also be 70 degrees. Now on the other side, this question mark represents the alternate interior angle for the angle marked 53 degrees. We can switch this question mark now to 53 degrees. Now these last two question marks, they represent alternate interior angles of each other. In order to find the measurement for those, we need to ask ourselves, what number plus 53 equals 180? That's the same as 180 degrees minus 53 degrees equals 127 degrees. So both of these question marks represent angles with a measure of 127 degrees. And we can double check by adding 127 plus 53. That should equal 180 degrees. We can even add up the total of all four of these angles and that should equal 360 degrees. 53 plus 127 plus 53 and plus another 127 should total 360 degrees. Number four. The two figures are scaled copies of each other. A. What are some ways that you can tell that they are scaled copies? Here's one way to tell that they're scaled copies. Angles A and P are corresponding angles. This line in red above angle A is one unit long, and that same line above angle P is three units long. That's a ratio of one to three. Angles C and R are also corresponding angles, and the line I've drawn next to angle C is one unit, and the line that I've drawn next to angle R is three units. That's also a ratio of one to three units. You can see I've drawn a few more lines. One is two units long compared to six units long, and another is three units long compared to nine units long. Their ratios are two to six and three to nine. These measurements all prove that all the lines on figure two are exactly three times longer than the lines on figure one. And that proves that they are scaled copies. B. What is the scale factor that takes figure one to figure two? The scale factor that takes figure one to figure two is three because figure two is three times larger than figure one. C. What is the scale factor that takes figure two to figure one? The scale factor that takes figure two to figure one is one third, because figure one is one third the size of figure two.